Hey folks, this is Ben with Road to VR, and I'm here with Bert, who is the CEO and founder of a company that now has a new name. What is it? Vervana. Vervana, which initially launched uh, True as player gear. True Player Gear, um, and now uh, you've got the Totem VR headset here. We yep. finally got to look at a uh, a working prototype. Yes. So can you tell us, just give us an overview of the headset itself and its features? Yeah, sure. So first and foremost, we, we have a 1080p um, 1080p uh, display with uh, 90 field of view optics. Um, we have two onboard cameras for positional tracking. Uh, this opens the door for uh, augmented reality um, and pastoral vision. So if you try to grab something on your desk, you just push a button and you'll be able to see to your actual space. Um, we have onboard focus. If you wear glasses, you can focus the lenses, um, we have onboard hardware acceleration. So we do all the pre-lens distortion for the optics inside the helmet in real time in the electronics. So that offloads the, the graphic cards. So you can pump more frame per second on your graphic cards. So it lowers the latency and it gives you a better experience. And so for now, you just have rotational tracking, but yes. for the uh, the version that you're going to launch with the Kickstarter, you expect to have positional tracking done? Um, so it will be done in the next month, so I'm not sure we will be able to show it during the Kickstarter, uh, but it will definitely be part of the of the dev kit when we, we ship it to backers. Um, we al already know how to tackle the problem, we have the, the resources in house to do that. We're, we're all coming from machine vision backgrounds. So we have, uh, I'm, ele uh, I'm computer engineer. We have three electronic engineer will work on that problem. We have uh, a guy who did uh, 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 physics engineering. So he does the optics, he helps with the algorithm. Uh, even e dissipation is an issue. So there, it's uh, really uh, all around um, project, you know, mechanics, optics, electronics, software. So it's a really exciting project, and we have a, a great team with different backgrounds to help us with uh, the challenges. And will the cameras match the field of view of what you can see inside the headset itself? Yes. So that's that's a plan. So uh, since it's um, so we have two 1080p uh, cameras, but since we don't take the whole uh, frame, because since we're already displaying the, the display in two, then we'll just take a portion of the 1080p um, cameras so that it, they're side by side. So it's, it's a natural look uh, when you hit the pasture button. So the field of view will actually be higher than the one to, since we're cropping, we need a, a wider field of view, and that it, it's a benefit also because it, it helps us for positional tracking. If you have a wider field of view, it's easier to track objects and then know your end movements with that. And so uh, for now you have DK1 emulation. Yes. Uh, can you talk about how that works? Yeah, so uh, right now we're seeing uh, for the games as uh, DK1. So we have uh, rotational tracking, we have, um, so you can enjoy all your favorite demos. Uh, the DK2 just came out, so we didn't have a chance to uh, work on the positional tracking uh, part, but that will definitely be something we, we want to support in the future so that uh, people will have access to all their favorite games and um, the developers won't uh, have too much work to do. We'll uh, also provide uh, plugins for uh, Unity, Unreal, uh, support. Uh, we talked with AVOC for the, their AVOC en uh, engine, their vision engine. They have a, a physics engine, but they also have a, a, a visual engine. So, And uh, CryEngine also has um, VR support and their engine, so we'll support that too. So, So it's transparent for developers. So you're doing onboard distortion, um, mm -hmm. but when you're accepting Rift video input, that's already pre-distorted. Yes. So you're undistorting their pre-distortion. No, we just uh, disable the feature. I see. 
So that's why in the demo you saw we only used the one for the, the DK1. So that's why the, it wasn't matching correctly the uh, exactly our lens, but we're working to uh, uh, optimize that so that it will look perfectly. We, we're still reverse engineering the the um, uh, the way that the SDK commun communicate with the HMD. So it, we're progressing really fast. So it, it will only get better and better. And so for now, uh, when you use that feature, mm -hmm. the totem headset is actually talking to the game as though the game thinks it's a DK1. Yes, exactly. So all the requests we receive there, like the, um, for example, it will tell you uh, put the sensor in 4G, then we receive that, we have to process it and things like that. So there's a lot of ongoing communication between the game and the headset. So right now we're handling most of them. So it's not 100% perfect emulation, uh, but we have great success with a lot of uh, demos. Some were great, some not that great. So uh, as I said, it's going to improve with time. And so as a developer who would be developing for a native application for the Totem, you would be sending a side-by-side, -side yes. undistorted um, exactly. video here, and mm -hmm. then the Totem is going to adapt that yep. specifically for the distortion of the lenses? Exactly. So that will make everything faster because uh, it takes a lot of horsepower to do the, the pre-lens distortion. It will hit a lot your GPU. So that will really offload your, your computer so you don't need a, a Titan to play in VR. So you'll save money on your graphic card it will cost a little bit more for the totem, but we think we have a, a lots of added value that people will enjoy. And do you have, have you done any tests really to, to understand the, like, the real practical benefits there? I mean, are we talking, like, how much uh, slower of a graphics card could I use at the right frame rates, given that we're offloading the distortion? I don't want to get too... <laughs> to uh, specific because you know we have to do extensive testing but like uh, my partner had like a really basic laptop and I remember uh, it was in Tuscany you know it was barely making I think uh, was it like 45 frame per second and then he, he uh, just sent side by side um, and then it went up to I think 75 so it's it's like 50 percent difference so i guess it will depend of uh, your gpu and things like that but i see for certain application where maybe you're on a laptop and you want to show uh, uh, something uh, about uh, architecture and uh, you 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 have a mac which has not a really great graphic card but you you still want to give a good experience that's where the totem will really be uh, beneficial because it will offload your, your laptop. Very interesting. And so uh, when developers do send that undistorted side-by-side -side mm -hmm. footage, uh, will the chromatic aberration correction happen? Do you send that with the image, uh, the outputs from the computer, or will that also happen in hardware? No, it happens also in hardware. So like, uh, since we design our own optics, we know exactly the, the distortion they, they do. Uh, it's different per color because uh, the light tra travels at a different speed depending on the color, so we can uh, we can adapt to that in in the headset. So, yeah. And have you started developing <coughs> any uh, in-house demos, or been working with developers to to work on demos that are native to the headset? Yeah. So we're working with um, there's a center called Nad Center in uh, in Montreal, which they have a, a specific degree in uh, in game design like at the university level so that's really a was one of the first in Canada so and um, they they have a specific class about VR so they're uh, they're using the totem to create uh, a unique experience um, in VR so and we also we're also in talk with someone at the McGill at McGill University who who should do the same uh, it's for broad broadcasting uh, sport a live sport content over uh, wireless uh, so that people can can have like a first first person view uh, of sports events so that's really um, 
I think VR will bring a really uh, unique experience that even if you're on the uh, so on the football field, you know, on the sideline, uh, being in VR on the game field is going to be something that you can that like buy a ticket cannot provide, but you will be able to enjoy in VR. And can you give us some details on the Kickstarter? Uh, what, what are your plans there? Okay, so um, we're really happy we got approved today. So we're going to launch on uh, Tuesday, September 16th, the day of my birthday. So it's my birthday present. Awesome. <laughs> Hope that uh, we got lots of uh, pledges. So that would be my best uh, present. And um, so we were aiming for a 350K goal. We had a lot of interesting uh, stretch goals, like um, a lot of people requested for a higher field of view. So uh, that's going to be a stretch goal. So at least 100, maybe more. We'll see depending on the distortion, because uh, the higher the field of view, the more the distortion you have. So we have to balance between uh, what's possible and what's not. So we we'll, can't promise uh, 120, but 100. Uh, we may we crunch the number it's possible so um, others oh yeah so I can say that we're also working on um, magnesium faceplate so uh, there's a couple of reasons for that um, uh, one it's a premium look so plastic you know people say oh, can you do something else than plastic so magnesium is um, really lightweight so that's really great and um, uh, it, it can dissipate heat also. So we have lots of, of, of power, so it's uh, like a, a good combo. You know, you have a nice look, like uh, the last uh, surface tree is made in magnesium. Um, so it's really uh, uh, a nice finish, but also it acts as a heat dissipator. So it's really a neat feature. And how far do you see the design of what we have here today changing from what you actually produce and send out to Kickstarter backers? So, okay. So this is our first generation mechanical. So we already designed a new one, uh, much simpler, uh, easier to produce and like to assemble, things like that. So uh, we'll, um, uh, we're building it right now. Um, the electronics will pretty much stay the same because one of the main reason we waited so long for to be on Kickstarter, we could have gone sooner, is we want to we wanted to make sure that we validate the electronics first, so that we can uh, ship the product uh, on time. So the good thing is our hardware is validated, everything, you, camera works, uh, the FPGA, the memory the audio, um, so every everything was tested in house and uh, it's uh, it's possible to do what we want to do with the current hardware. Now it's just a matter of programming those those chips so that we uh, we we find the best algorithm to give the best performance with that hardware. And one of the great features also of an FPGA is that it's you can upgrade it on the field later. So we might ship uh, a version, um, like I mentioned you before, maybe with Fiducial to start with for personal tracking. And as we improve the algorithm and say, okay, we don't need Fiducial anymore, then we can just send a firmware update to the backers and they'll be able to do positional tracking without Fiducial. So that's one of the features that uh, we think it's great about our, our headset. And talking about audio before uh, I forget, you have these interesting two yes. um, ports in the front. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we provide binaural uh, surround, uh, surround sound. So um, if we receive 5.1 uh, surround sound over HDMI, we process it on board also and keep the spatial awareness um, with ster only stereo earbuds. And one of the other cool things that we will provide in the Kickstarter is custom fitted earbuds. So we're working with a local partner who have uh, a lot of patents in uh, custom fitted uh, earbuds. So it sounds great, it's really lightweight, 
and it blocks all outside sound so you're really immersed in VR um, and um, so it's going to be uh, included in some early bird package and since they're custom fitted you need uh, one per person so if you're uh, uh, buying the totem with friends you could buy extra e earbuds so that everyone can enjoy uh, their sound and so you'll actually have uh, one headset will plug in on the left and one will plug in on yeah. the right and it'll be mono in each but stereo together yeah. so so we, we've put a stereo connector on each side so that if you on your if you own your own e e um, earbuds or uh, headphones you can just plug it them in and it will work any side but um, the one we will provide our mono, but it will just one will be plug only on the left connector and the other one on the right connector inside the, the stereo connectors. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about the screen. Can you say what's currently in there and, and what yes. you're planning to okay. ship in the Kickstarter? Yes, so right now it's a LCD screen, um, RGB stripe, so we have almost no screen door effect um, compared to Pantel display. And um, we're working with a manufacturer right now, and we're supposed to have our panel in the next couple of weeks. So we're really excited about that. Can't wait to try the totem with OLED and uh, in low persistence. So we will definitely ship with the OLED panel. That's a must um, for a great VR experience. And uh, we'll also pump the frame rate up to 70 Hertz. Not yet 90 because um, the current chips don't allow that much bandwidth. That's currently the limiting factor. But uh, for sure the co uh, consumer version will have 90 hertz. And the pa current panel is 1080p mm -hmm. and the OLED panel is going to be 1080p for yes. the Kickstarter. Do you awesome. see the consumer version uh, releasing at a time when uh, it's appropriate to have even higher resolution? Yeah, definitely. So I think uh, 1440p is, uh, is really a realistic goal. Um, we, al we already saw that the Samsung Gear has 1440p. So, and we know that our uh, partner uh, is already have prototypes of 1440p uh, panels. So I don't see that as a problem. I think we'll, we'll have access to 1440p panels in RG RGB stripes. So I think at 1440, we'll not see any, uh, any screen door effect. We might if we go a uh, wider field of view, but we'll, we'll have to see what's the right balance between uh, uh, field of view and screen door effect. And the last thing I want to talk about is you do have a focus on the lenses, right? So instead mm -hmm. of swappable lenses, you mm -hmm. have a focus mechanism? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now, since it's our first, uh, first generation mechanical uh, prototype, it's a slider right here. But in the next version, it's going to be, uh, you're going to just turn a, a knob to make the focus going to be uh, much more precise, um, easier to manufacture. Um, so we're really excited about that. And the thing that we realize also is that um, if you're a hardcore gamer, you can play a, a lot and this gets sweaty. So we want to provide a, a swappable um, foam so that um, let's say you, you share it with friends and you're having fun and say, okay, come, come at home, try my headset. Like some people might say, oh, well, <laughs> can you wait it for it to dry or something? So we will provide uh, different uh, foams so that you can swap it out. Uh, and also um, for the medical uh, application, that's really useful also because uh, a lot of uh, um, doctors told us, oh man, the totem would be perfect for medical simulation, training surgeon, things like that. And they say, but you know, uh, we have uh, strict rules, so they found that uh, like changing the phone was really a good feature also.